Welcome to the Smart Zone demonstration series for Release 5.0. In this series, we'll be covering the new features available in Release 5.0. In this demonstration, I'll be covering the new Zero Touch Mesh feature. This feature allows administrators to connect access points to mesh networks without the requirement for a physical Ethernet connection prior to placement in the field. APs will now be able to discover the mesh network over the 5 GHz band. Once discovered, administrators can verify and approve AP access through the Smart Zone user interface. So let's get started. So here we'll log into my Virtual Smart Zone. It's a Virtual Smart Zone Essentials. You'll notice it's running version 5.0.0.0.675. This is the initial GA release for version 5.0 of Smart Zone. These features that we're going to cover here are available both in the appliance for this Smart Zone release as well as the uh, high scale edition of Virtual Smart Zone. So let's take a look at what we're looking at here. So under wireless LANs, uh, I have a Ruckus Lab Zone right here with uh, one AP in it uh, and one WLAN configured. So I'll go ahead and configure the zone first. So to enable mesh networking, you configure the zone and the configuration will by default be applied to all APs in the zone. So here's our enable option under mesh options. We'll enable mesh networking and the new feature is right here at the zero touch mesh. So we'll leave the rest of the settings at default. Uh, we'll leave it at the five gigahertz radio because this feature in this release uh, only works, the zero touch mesh only works in the five gigahertz uh, radio range. So it doesn't work in 2.4 in this particular release, but it will become in the future. So let's go ahead and enable this. And once we enable this and click OK, what it's going to do is reset the AP that I have in this zone. And that AP is going to come up as a meshed AP. Now, if mesh networking were already enabled on this zone, but zero touch mesh was not enabled, you wouldn't require an access point reboot. The access points would just become zero touch APs uh, in this domain. So I am going to speed through this section while the AP reboots, and I'll come back to you as soon as it's rebooted. Okay, so judging from the LEDs on my access point, it has been rebooted and is back up. So let's go ahead and take a look at the configuration over here. So we do see my R510 access point. Uh, it is back up and online. We'll refresh that just to make sure we have actual current information for it. Uh, we can go down to events down here and look at this access point. It's uh, E0. So it was rebooted because of the enabling of mesh. Uh, it was reconnected, applying the new configuration, updated that configuration. So the configuration was adding the zero touch mesh functionality to it. So let's take a look at this AP's configuration now. We'll go over here and click configure. Uh, we'll look at the options as a refresh here. Uh, we'll minimize these and we can see the mesh configuration options. Uh, it is the default mesh configuration that's applied to an access point when mesh is enabled in a zone. Uh, the mesh mode is auto and the uplink is smart. So these are the default settings. Of course, you can always disable mesh for this particular access point within the zone, but by default, when you enable mesh networking in a zone, uh, the APs are configured in mesh mode, and then you'd have to manually go in and disable mesh mode if you wanted that for an access point within the zone. So that all looks good. So let's go over here and click mesh. And when we look at mesh, we're looking at the APs uh, that are in the mesh networking uh, of this particular zone. Notice the zone on the left, the only one available is the Ruckus Lab zone because that is the only zone that has mesh networking configured in it. And here is the AP we configured for mesh networking. Uh, it is R510-1 is the name of it. It's an R510 model AP. We get the IP address, and then we get the mesh role. This is a root access point, and this is the root access point because realistically it's because it's the only access point I have in this zone that's part of this mesh. So now I'm going to go ahead and power up an R500 that I have here. This is a factory defaulted R500. Uh, I'm going to bring it up, and what we expect it 
do is be able to identify this mesh network over the 5 gigahertz channel and be able to join that network. Uh, once we can see that, then we'll be able to approve it, and I'll show you that process when we get there. So hang tight while I power up this R500AP, and I'll come back to you after it boots up, and we'll see it uh, when, it gets a, when we get to the point where we can approve it and add it to our mesh network. Okay, I'm seeing some activity on the access point, so let's go over here and take a look and see if it's uh, in the unapproved APs list for us. And yes, there it is. So here is the R500 access point. Uh, this is the MAC address for that access point. Uh, it's an R500, and it's pending approval. So this is where we would need to uh, come in and approve this access point. So a couple of things you're going to need to approve an access point. And really, the, the thing you need is the last four digits of the serial number. So let's go ahead and approve this AP. So it asks us which zone we want to put it in. Now, we only have one zone enabled for mesh networking, so it's the only one that's going to be available to us. And I can show you that there. And then here we put in the last four digits of the serial number, and it's 9241 for this access point. And we can approve. Now that we've approved, the access point is going to go through a few reboots and a few configuration steps that happen to it. So again, I'm going to speed through this, and I'll come back to you when that's done, and we'll take a look at the event log and show what happens to this AP when it joins the mesh network. On the R500, I saw the uh, director or controller LED um, flashing rapidly. So at this point, what I'm imagining it's doing was um, downloading the, the updated firmware or the required firmware to this access point. So again, there, there are multiple steps when an AP joins this mesh network, but it also shows you basically get that same behavior uh, as connecting an AP either over the wired network um, and then configuring it as a meshed AP that once it establishes communications to the controller, uh, then it will begin doing all the standard of pushing configuration and firmware images out to the access point. So it's now resetting again after receiving that firmware update and uh, we'll wait for it to reboot and I'll come back to you when it's up and again we'll take a look at what we see in Smart Zones user interface. Okay, so everything looks good here on my R510, that is the root AP. I've got the 5 gigahertz slow flashing. Uh, that's indicating that uh, the WLAN is up and at least one downlink uh, mesh AP is connected. So it looks good there. Uh, on the R500, which is the new AP, I've got uh, solid green LEDs for power, uh, director slash controller, and the air LED, which uh, all indicate that it's connected to a mesh network, uh, that it's talking to the controller, and that it's fully powered on. So let's take a look at what we can see in the smart zone user interface. So now when we look at this interface, uh, we see that we have two access points. Uh, we have one uh, R510 that's a root AP. We've got an R500 that's a mesh AP. Uh, we get some signal levels and information about it. So everything seems to look good here. Uh, we have both APs up in the mesh, uh, the root and then a standard mesh AP. So what this shows us is that uh, indeed these two access points were able to uh, discover each other over the air. The R500 itself was simply connected to power. No ethernet cables connected to it whatsoever. Was it a factory default configuration? Um, and it was able to come up and join this mesh, mesh network. So let's go ahead and take a look at this specific AP. Uh, let's go down here to the group configuration, uh, click on this AP, and look at events. And we can see some of the things that happened with this AP uh, over the time that it was discovered. Let's see, this AP sent a discovery request to the virtual smart zone. We approved it. Uh, that's the, the approval step. And now we'll walk through this in time. So um, we connected the AP because of discovery. It went through a reboot. Uh, we saw it come back up again here. We set the state to mesh on it. The AP rebooted uh, because of uh, firmware and configuration change, assumingly, as well. Uh, so we uh, connected. The firmware was being updated uh, from 
this uh, 110 solo firmware version to the 5.0 firmware version that comes with SmartZone. Uh, it rebooted again, so it updated that firmware and uh, was updated to a new configuration, a new configuration ID. And then after that, uh, that configuration was updated, uh, connected to the, the uh, root AP, established the mesh uplinks, and then it was rebooted again due to the IP mode configuration change, and then it connected after rebooting, and that's the state we're up at now with uh, fully connected AP uh, to the mesh network with no wires except for a power cord, and it was able to join the mesh network simply by discovering over the 5 gigahertz band, uh, showing up in the smart zone user interface, us approving it on the smart zone user interface, and then smart zone went through its normal process of updating configurations, updating firmware images, and then establishing this as a mesh node on the network. And as soon as it rebooted that final time, allowed it to quickly join the mesh network uh, it quickly and easily without uh, much user intervention. So this doesn't require require an administrator to manually connect this to a physical Ethernet network and attach it to Smart Zone to configure it as a mesh node. Uh, it discovers that process and discovers that immediately on um, identifying that mesh network over the 5 gigahertz band. So hopefully this information was helpful to you. Uh, again, this is part of a series. This series covers Smart Zone release version 5.0. This series of videos covers updates in the version 5.0 release. Some of these updates affect uh, AP functionality. Some of these affect configuration capabilities in SmartZone. So I hope you come back and view some of the other videos in this series covering the updates in version 5.0. Thank you for viewing this presentation and hope you come back for more in the future. Thank you.